Hi, I'm uh, Peter Swarsbert, and today we're talking about hydraulic presses. Uh, the hydraulic press is a very versatile tool for uh, the home shop, or you know, if you're a hobbyist, or if you are, uh, you know, a full-time maker. Uh, and right here, we have kind of the easiest way to get into some kind of hydraulic press, which is a log splitter. Uh, and you get, especially uh, an electric log splitter like this. Um, this is a 16 ton press, um, moves pretty fast, we'll, we'll flip it on here. Uh, so that has a, what's called a two stage pump. Um, so you've got a, a high speed and a low speed. The low speed gives you the, the real forging pressure, high speed gets you where you need to go, um, but at a very low pressure. Uh, now a 16 ton press, there are 24 ton presses uh, on the market. We actually have one we'll look at in a minute. Um, but a 16 ton press, that'll definitely get the job done. It, you just need to take smaller bites. Um, you know, right now we have this set up with our uh, cold bending jig for bending radiuses and things to that effect. Uh, but you can put anything you want on here. You know, if you were doing, if we were doing a lot of forging with this, we would probably, uh, you know, change out this guide system a little bit, make it a little tighter. Uh, but we actually uh, made a, an adapter to fit right on the log splitter uh, that fits down over this, you know, crazy solid piece they've got welded on. We just have a, a, a block that slides down over that, that then everything else we do fits around that block. So we don't have to mimic this shape repeatedly. And if we want to, we can yank that off there and still use it as a log splitter. Um, you know, so this unit, really quick and easy to get into. It's 220 single phase, so if you've got a dryer outlet, it'll almost certainly work. Uh, let's get a, a quick close up just of the, the motor on this. Uh, so people have an idea what kind of size motor they're looking at because you know that that really is the determining factor with your uh current electrical system um so yeah you know is it a little awkward that you're working sideways sure but at the same time uh you know the 16 ton press that's 16 tons that's way more than you're gonna be forging by hand so you know you can get into all kinds of damascus work these are perfect for doing feather pattern billets, thing, you know, longer billets that need to get split or shaped in some fashion. Uh, and, and for the most part, you know, you can poke around on eBay, you can look, uh, you know, online in various places. The log splitters are fairly cheap, and um, like I said, you know, it's a really quick and easy way to get into having a hydraulic press. Uh, without needing, you know, if you don't need all the, you know, all the bits and pieces that might come with a purpose-made forging press. You know, and also if you're a little handy and can deal with, uh, you know, making some of your own parts. The uh, one thing to really know about presses, uh, you know, and forging presses, is that it is an enormous amount of pressure so if you have something in there that is springy, that's incredibly dangerous. So when you're working hot materials, there, I'm not going to say there's no danger, but there's very little danger because that material is not springy. If you're trying to do cold work or you're starting to work too cold on your steel, uh, that can get dangerous really fast because it will absorb that, uh, that uh, force, that energy and things can shoot out. And if you have something shoot out of a press, it is going fast, it'll go right through you. So uh, you don't want that to happen. Um, other thing with presses, safety-wise, you want to make sure that your hoses are uh, you know, staying in good condition because if you get a puncture in one of the high-pressure hoses, again, it's coming out very, uh, very fast. That oil is coming out probably at 2,500 PSI that will also go right through you. Uh, and it also aerosolizes pretty quick, uh, so you can have a giant fireball. Um, so whether you're up for the risk of things passing through your body and giant explosions, 
that's up to you. Uh, we don't we don't judge one way or the other. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's this. Uh, we're gonna move on to um, some of the other presses we have in the show. Okay, so this ugly beast here is a press that I actually built myself uh, not quite 20 years ago. Uh, it is a 24 ton press. Uh, I think it actually has essentially the same size motor on it. Uh, it's another 220 single phase motor. Uh, because it's a higher uh, tonnage press, you'll see it moves a little slower. It doesn't have quite the same speed uh, of movement there. Uh, again, it is a, a, a two-stage motor, or a two-stage pump. So we've got a high speed, which in this case isn't very fast, and a low speed, uh, you know, once it actually engages, for quite a long time, I did almost all of my uh, heavier work under this press. Uh, you know, the tonnage of the press is really dictated by the size of the cylinder. Uh, so that other one is a four-inch cylinder, gives you roughly uh, 16 ton. This is a five-inch cylinder. Uh, depending on what pressure you're running, uh, you know, is often either a 20 or a 24 ton uh, press. I have this set up as a 24 ton press. Uh, if we upgraded this motor using the exact same uh, pump, this would all go twice as fast, uh, both in the, the high pressure and the, the low pressure sections of the, the pump. Now, uh, why I built this press is, is kind of key for uh, you know folks working at home. So I used to uh, have a self-built air hammer that I had used for you know, probably five years prior to building the press. I had to move into a new shop space, and that new shop space, I could not use the hammer. It was partly uh, the floor wouldn't support it. You need an actual foundation under any kind of uh, forging hammer. Um, and the other thing is noise. You know, yeah, the, the press makes kind of an annoying whine, but that's basically all the noise it makes. You're not making any, uh, you know, there's no loud banging, there's no impacts, there's no vibrations people are gonna feel in the floor. Uh, if you've got neighbors, if you're working out of your garage, this is a lot less impact on your neighbor. You know, that, that whine that you hear from the motor and the pump, it really doesn't get very far. Um, and also, anybody who complains about that, they're gonna, they're just gonna complain anyways, so you can forget about them. Um, but yeah, so I, I built this press specifically to be able to continue doing the heavier work with those restrictions, um, you know, on, on uh, sound and vibration. So if you're in a situation where you uh, either can't be making loud noises or um, you're, you don't have a foundation underneath uh, that can support a hammer, Press is a really great way to go. One downside to presses versus hammers, they tend to be a little bit less versatile uh, for generalized forging. Presses are great because you can make all kinds of crazy dies for them that are very specific. Uh, a forging hammer, it works much more like uh, you doing hand forging, except with a lot more power. So you have more flexibility uh, in how you work, and hammers also tend to work better on thinner stock. Presses, uh, because they're, they've got that full contact on the material, they chill it very quickly. The thinner the material, the faster that chill happens. So presses tend to have problems with thin stock. Hammers tend to have problems with thick stock. Uh, so hammers are typically rated by the thickness uh, that they will work. Presses typically are kind of restricted by what surface area they'll work because you're, you're taking that set tonnage and spreading it out so it becomes less pressure per square inch. So the, the wider the material, the smaller you, the bites you need to take so that you maintain the same uh, per square inch. Um, and 
also, like I was saying, that chill factor, working thin material. So if you're if you're doing a lot of, you know, if you were trying to forge knife blades to shape with a press, that would probably be a little tricky, just because you're going to chill the material. Uh, hammer is a little better for that, but sometimes you just can't have a hammer. So uh, something like this, where you know, and you could even, if you were so clever, you could take that log splitter and set it up vertically like this. Um, you know, if, you're going, if you are going to be doing a lot of forging work, uh, something like that log splitter, you want to build a more robust guide system. Uh, log splitter doesn't need a huge amount of rigidity in that ram guide. You kind of want it for doing a lot of forging. There are more lateral forces involved. And you don't want your dies to be able to shift off from each other by an eighth inch. You're totally going to screw up what you're working on. Um, so, uh, I think that's this press. We're going to move on to our final press, which isn't currently functioning. Okay, so uh, here we have the last of our presses. Uh, like I said, currently not functioning. Uh, we're having some kind of problem with the motor. Haven't quite figured it out yet. Uh, so this is uh, Mareko's press. Now, it runs a single stage pump, uh, which means that the speed that the, the ram moves is the speed it moves all the time, whether you're uh, just getting to the steel or pushing the steel. So it, it has an immense amount of oomph. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't pause much when it gets to the steel, so you have to be a little careful with uh, the single stage uh, pump style of press. Um, but again, you know, so this one you can see it's a slightly different design. It's built super robust so that it can be open on that side. Um, so doing a, a, a C-frame press rather than my press, which is an H-frame press, the, uh, the C-frame press, now you can work, you know, 180 degrees around on those dies. So you can set up your dies in all different directions or use the same dies in all different ways. Uh, you know, so for flexibility, that's that's great. Uh, the difficulty being, you, you need a very robust frame because, uh, again, this is a 24 ton press. 24 tons of pressure will flex a lot of stuff. Uh, so you can see the size of the I-beam uh, that this was built with. Uh, maybe it's a little overboard, but at the same time, uh, you know, I think the guy who built this knew what he was doing. Uh, so, uh, what we really want to show you here is this power unit down here, the power pack, is uh, a commercially made, readily available power pack. So if you were looking to build your own press and you wanted to take some of the guesswork out of it, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but this is made by uh, Foster Hydraulics. Um, you can go on their website and uh, check out the various power packs. This is the this one here is the 10 horsepower single stage. Uh, so you know it, it's one of their biggest units. But uh, my 24 ton press is actually running on a two horsepower motor. So uh, having that two stage motor or the two stage pump, you get a little bit. In, in some sense, a little more bang for your buck in terms of speed. It does work the material more slowly than this press. The, uh, you know, assuming that your pump and motor are properly sized to each other, the, uh, you know, and, and you compare them between the presses, the horsepower of the motor definitely translates into more horsepower in the forging capability. But at the same time, you know, there are a lot of folks out there working under 16 ton presses. And, you know, as long as you got a reasonably fast cycle time, you can get an amazing amount of work done with a 16 ton press. Once you figure out, uh, you know, either what surface area you can have on your dies, or, you know, at the very least, how big a bite you can take, you know, in terms of how much surface area you bite off each time. So, uh, you know, that gives you kind of the idea. You can also, there are uh, commercially available forging presses that are special made 
uh, just for uh, blacksmiths and bladesmiths. Uh, they come from a whole variety of different companies, uh, all the way from Anyang is now making a forging press. There are a lot of uh, in, you know, smaller independent companies that are making, making forging presses. Um, you know, and the, the nice thing about it is, you know, it's something to really pay attention to if you are looking to just buy a press, is make sure that the die system, you know, how uh, new dies fit in there, you know, A, that it looks strong, you know, that everything's going to register in there really tightly, um, you know, but also that it's easy to use. So, like, this one, there's just a registration pin, and then these slide in and out. You know, so that's nice and quick and easy. It's really secure. Uh, and it's easy to make new dies yourself if you want to. Uh, you know, so if you, if you see one where the dies are, like, bolted in place, if you are thinking, hey, I'm going to really just put one set of dies in there and that's it, then that's great. You know, they're not going to move. It's very secure. If you are thinking about this in terms of I want to have a lot of flexibility in how I work, then making sure you've got a secure die set up that is also easy to uh, switch out is going to be really key because, you know, I, I know for us, when we're working with the press, we very often are swapping out uh, which dies are in there pretty frequently. You know, because you, like I was saying earlier, the advantage of a press is really easy to make custom dies. In most cases, you can just make them out of mild steel. Uh, Whereas with a hammer, you really want heat-treated dies. On a press, you know, yeah, mild steel will wear over time, but pretty minimally, and it's mild steel, so it's easy to fix. Um, so, you know, th those are kind of your options. There's the, the really easy, uh, buy, buy yourself a, you know, something like a, a log splitter, and do some minor modifications. You can build a press completely from scratch or using a, a purchased power pack, which is, I will say, a really good way to go. They're surprisingly economical. Uh, you know, if you price out the parts separately and then include the time that you're gonna spend putting it all together, it, it's kind of hard to beat the, uh, the pre-made power packs. Uh, you know, or, or you can just buy a forging press. Uh, you know, and all of this, you know, that power that you get with a hydraulic press is going to greatly expand uh, your capabilities. It really opens up uh, Damascus work. Um, you know, or if you're just wanting to work larger size stock, but most people who buy a press, it's because they really want to make Damascus. And you can make Damascus by hand, but you're gonna hate yourself, you know, and then you're gonna blow out your elbow or your shoulder or back or like your whole body and if you look at those future medical bills against the cost of making a press, probably the press is a good concept. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's one of the tools in our shop, um, how we use it a little bit and you know why you might want one yourself uh, and good ways to get into it. So thanks for watching.